Hi, this is Lucid Stu, and welcome to my tutorial on how to create characters in Project Spark. Uh, I'm going to be concentrating mainly uh, here on humanoid characters, but you'll be able to take some of uh, these techniques and carry them over to the other characters like the fish and the animals, wolves and owls. Uh, but we'll be dealing with the human male here. Um, most of what's applicable here is going to be applicable to all of the other uh, characters that have four limbs and a head. So what you see here on screen are the types of characters that you'll be able to build with these techniques. These are four characters that I've built lately. I have a robot on the left, Darth Vader on his right, Master Chief on his right, and then a Rengard character that I built for Greedy Medic's level for the Thursday uh, Remix stream. And uh, those are all examples of characters that you can build. And you see they animate pretty well. That's that's the main goal here. Uh, anyone can pile on a bunch of uh, props together, uh, but the question is whether or not it looks good in motion. And, and if you look really close at these, you'll see they're not perfect. I don't think uh, you ever will be able to, to attain uh, perfection as far as animation goes, uh, making these types of characters in Project Spark. But as long as they look good uh, from the player's perspective, that's what, import what is important, and uh, I think we can achieve that. So let's get into edit, <coughs> and we'll talk about a few things. Uh, first thing, what I'm going to be aiming for here and what you should aim for in general is to get your character down to 100% scale. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the character's scale needs to be 100%, but it should uh, be working in a 100% scale world. And the reason for that is that um, the physics engine in Project Spark works better when you're near 100% scale. You don't have to be exactly at it um, you'll see Master Chief over here is 113% scale and that's good because he's supposed to be about a head higher than normal people so he's right on target there he would fit in perfect one of the 100% scale world <clears throat> got Darth Vader right next to him take a look at his scale he's at 137% now he's at 137% because I couldn't get the level of detail on him that I wanted unless I made him a little bigger. That's not that big of a problem. Um, it, just like Master Chief, he's supposed to be about a head higher than the average person. So he's going to fit into about 120% scale world. In order to get him to work, you just have to scale everything up in that world to 120%. It's close enough to 100 where you're probably not going to run into any problems with scale. Generally, I would say if you can keep it your your scale for the world under 200 percent you should be fine okay <clears throat> uh, excuse me for all the disgusting noises I'm making I have cold right now what I'm going to be covering here is um, the character type where we're going to attach objects to the character in the editor not in code. That's a completely different tutorial. I generally don't do it that way. Um, it's not impossible. I have seen it done. I've seen it done very well. It's just in order to explain that you need a whole other tutorial and this one is just for um, attaching in the editor. Uh, one issue that you're going to come up against right away is whether or not the character that you're working with is going to be visible or not and let's just look at a couple of examples. <clears throat> this robot here is an invisible coding golem and the thing about invisible characters is that it's going to free you up to do things like having this forearm section away from the actual forearm of the character uh, and, and other things like the, the hips socket being actually visible outside of the character's body uh, it, it has its flaws and, and the main things are feet and hands 
Uh, the hands are a big one. Feet aren't so bad. You can see the feet don't look too bad on this character. Uh, you run into some problems with the feet clipping the ground. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. But uh, foot attachments in general in Project Spark act kind of strangely because the attachment point is at the very back of the foot. So you tend to get a lot of uh, range at the front of the foot and it, it doesn't look ideal, but it's not too bad. The hands are another story. Uh, because you only have one attachment point, you don't have an attachment point for each of the fingers, it's nearly impossible to build hands on a, on a character like this. Uh, so you're going to have things, substitute things, like something that kind of looks like a hand, an assembly that you can build that kind of looks like a hand. Um, and you start running into scale problems there because making fingers in Project Spark means you're going to have a larger character. So uh, generally, if, you're, if your character needs to hold anything or hands are important for it, you're going to want to use a visible character like Darth Vader here and uh, Master Chief and the Ren Guard. Those are all visible characters. Now where you start running into problems with visible characters is the joints. In invisible characters you can just uh, put a joint between at your attachment point and, and that's it. As long as the uh, objects in there, as long as the connection between those two objects is inside that, that's fine. But with the visible character you also have to deal with the uh, character itself and that starts getting tricky especially around the elbows and the knees and the shoulders uh, and there are ways around that you can do like Master Chief here where it just so happens that Master Chief's character design does not have any armor on uh, elbows and uh, knees so that wasn't even an issue there uh, with Darth Vader for the most part I'm not uh, dealing with attachments to his elbows and knees so that's not a problem either and then with the Ren guard uh, what I did was I was able to circumvent the elbow issue with uh, Seth's uh, gloves here and also uh, you can see the knees are kind of bare there but uh, I was able to cover those up a little bit and another thing that you'll notice is each of these characters has clothing gloves and clothing boots and that's something that you're probably going to end up doing if you're working with a character that's visible uh, because it's very difficult to build convincing boots on a visible character for the feet and it's nearly impossible actually it is impossible to uh, construct hands on a visible character because the the hands deform and do all kind of strange things and they will just come out of your props and uh, it does not look good. So one thing I wanted to cover real quick <coughs> was just a real uh, overview on on the attachment points and, and exactly how they work. So here we have all uh, a sphere on all the attachment points um, the three in the middle are the two hips and the root. The one above the, directly above those three is backside. The two astride and slightly above are the shoulders and the one at the very top is the head. Let me switch to a, a little drawing that I did in paint real quick. <coughs> 